All right, everybody, how's it going? Tony here, our cabin of woods. Today, I've got a pretty big job to do, and it's kind of a maintenance, but it's uh, I, I feel I've got some problems going on with my diesel, and um, it's in the front wheels. I believe I have a bearing or bearings going bad. Um, these have really big hubs on the front end, which I can show you right here. Here you go. This is called a hub. Here's your four bolt hole. These four studs will go in, all right? And they connect into your, your um, spindle assembly that's in there, okay? Um, these things are heavy. I'm guessing this weighs 25 or 30 pounds a piece. This is your bearing that's in here, okay? Let me try to spin it. See how it moves, okay? The electric part is for ABS, but, and here's your studs that you see, I've got two of them. Um, it's very hard to determine on a hub bearing unless it's very severe on which one it is. Now, you're, you are known that you can jack these up and take the wheel from top to bottom and rotate them, see if you can't find play. These are tight, but still on hub bearings until they get really bad it's hard to say where where your problem is all right guys we got the caliper off here's the bolts these are 13 16 uh, bolt heads they came through here and they also is where they screwed in back here into this hole so it's two of them you've got one and you've got two down here at the bottom you can pull that all off. Now, if you know your brakes are good, you don't have to separate your calipers from the caliper uh, bracket. You don't. Slide it off. You can see these rotors are only like two or three months old. Um, they look great. We've done, we've probably done about a thousand mile pull on it so far with the camper and uh, some other trips I've taken. So the brakes look great. But there's the size. I will let you know what the torque is when I put that back together. I don't remember. But here we go. Okay. Now that that is loose, if your rotors are froze on there, um, usually what I do is I usually hit here, vibrate it. On this part, I'll put a, the nut back on the wheel, and I'd hit this. But these are all just taken off not long ago, and uh, there we go. Now, like I said a minute ago, that these brakes and stuff were from Detroit Axle. All right, now, next thing we need to do is uh, there was a vacuum hose that went to this front hubs for your 4x4. You disconnect that. Your ABS, you want to disconnect that. That came across, went all the way around and connected up on the back side of this. That's disconnected out of the way. Now we need to take this clip out right here. It's a, like a clip pin. You squeeze it and you'll just pull it out. Where my screwdriver? Right here. And what that's going to do is allow this cover. There you go. What you're squeezing on is this. And I'll allow you to let this take this cover off right here. It's coming out. There we go. And there's your hub assembly. Your 4x4 where your axle and your hub uh, lock together. And that looks good. Alright, the next thing is there going to be a, a clip in here. All right, let me show you something. There are so many different style of tools to remove these springs that's in here. Different, all kinds of different ones. Believe it or not, I made that to remove. I took apart the spring to remove the AC clutch on a Ford. But there's so many different ones that you can use. You just need to figure out which one will fit down in where we got to go. All right. You see the hole there? And a hole here? What you're going to do is put your pin in there, you're going to squeeze it, and that's going to open up that slot, that clip, 
and then it slides off the axle. Let me get it hooked up and I'll show you what it looks like. There you go. I'm pulling it out. That's what it looks like. Now we've got a couple other things that's in there. We've got a washer. There's the washer. And then you've got like a plastic spacer, I guess you would call it. And then the shaft moves. Yeah, it moved in a little bit, so we should be good. Um, the only thing left now is to get is your, your hub. This is your hub here. I feel a little bit of something. Uh, you're going to have your four. I showed you a minute ago on the new one where the studs were. Okay, these are the fittings here. Right there, we got to take loose. So we'll have four of them. They are very, very tight. Alrighty, guys. I don't know if you can see them, but down there, there's four nuts in that bolt. Don't bother with that bolt. But those four nuts come off from the back side of here. The stud goes through this way. Here, here. Underneath the same, they come through right by where they shaft goes through now i see so many people i've done hubs before a long time okay i see so many people will go and just bang one side bang the other back and forth walk it off i have always been 100 percent hit them the same way coming off and it should break loose half decent i had to have some severely rusted ones where i had to put heat on the spindle a little bit to get them to break loose but 90% of the time this is what really works right here and if you're not using this that's fine they do make a puller that bolts to these bolts these studs and it's a slide hammer to knock this off I'm not gonna need it because this is junk to me we're just gonna go ahead and try to knock it off and see what we come up with I mean already the second hit it's cracking Make sure that that does slide back in. It does, and that is coming off. Okay, I'm just going to go to one. And there we go. It slides on its own. That was easy. Your, your um, e-brake or your, your, your analog brake cable. And we're going to pull this off together. There it goes. There we go. There's the old one. You will keep this dust shield. We'll reuse that again. All right, guys. We got our four studs back in all the way around. They're tightened down. Make sure you put your shield back on the way you took it off. Um, your wiring is in this area. That's what that indentation for is for that. So now all we're going to do is just pick this thing up. And flip it back up and we're going to slide it back on that direction wire goes on top oh look at that you see that rubber that red plug right here you gotta take it off guys <laughs> Here we go. We're really close. Ah. All right, I'm not gonna bang it all the way on because we're gonna use those four nuts. We're gonna tighten up. We're gonna tighten them up as we go around and then we have to bring them to 133 pounds torque. There is a bunch of people talking about um, uh, stipulations about being at like at 55 pounds and uh, two I mean 133 pounds well um, Ford Mac uh, Ford book I had to call my friend and he said yeah 133 pounds please do it all right guys 133 pounds is rough Woo! I'm tired all right let me take this off. Hey, when you ever use a torque wrench, don't ever leave it on your torque setting that you had it. 
get it back off to zero because the spring that's in there can be damaged. This is my same torque wrench I've had for 40 years, 50 years. It's a Mat Matco. Anyway, okay. Um, what I got to get on now, move that out of the way. I just put it closer. Um, there is a little strap right here. We got to put down. I know my arm is in the way. There's a little bolt that holds this harness right here snug. Get that back on tight. And that's just a snug. That's plastic. There we go. Won't need that again. All right. And basically what will end up happening is after I get the caliper back on here again, um, I will run my hose and my line on this brake line and get that on there. I think next thing that I do is go ahead and put these pins, all these little clips and washers back in here again. All right, guys, next piece is to get this back on again. Um, because you're going to have splines here, you're going to have splines here, so it will be hard to get that out of there or to put it back in. So you basically you're going to turn it till you feel it hit a spline. This spline is going to hit first, and then this will be right after it. You know what? Let me put just a little grease right there on the edge of that, just a little bit. All right, I put a little grease on here, but only just a hair. You don't want to put grease on these splines at all. Do you want, this is a dry fit, all of it. I put this some right there because that's a rubber seal, and I just didn't want it to tear it or anything happening to it when we start shoving it in the spot. All right, so let's get it in there. It, you will end up having to tap it with the hammer to get it going, but just get everything lined up, and it should start to fall go on in. There it goes. All right. All right. Went in a little bit easier than I thought. Okay. Now we got to put that ring back on we talked about earlier. And that ring, and all you're going to do is squeeze it. You might be able to do it by hand, but let's squeeze the ring all the way. And we're going to slide it on here. And I've seen people do it this way also. In fact, that's maybe what I'm going to try to do. Is just go ahead and feed it in that way and just keep pushing it all the way in. There we go. It's all the way in. I just make sure it's pry on it a little bit, make sure it's in its hole, and it is. There we go. It's locked. Hub's locked. It's all good. Next thing, let's get this rotor on here. This rotor is heavy. There we go. Now, Something that I do that makes it easy to put calipers on, I'll always go ahead and put a, a nut on the hub so it pushes that rotor like that nice and tight so everything lines up easy. It just makes it easier for me to work. Something I've done, and when you're dealing with a big rotor like this one, yeah. All right, here's one. Here's the two bolts. One will go here. One will go there, but we got to take this caliper and move it. And this is heavy. There it goes. Take my hat off. Get that other caliper bolt on. Let me uh, get that all tightened down, and um, 
I'll show you, we gotta run these wires through here. All right, guys, don't forget to take this off here. That's on there. These bolts, the two caliper bracket bolts, are torqued to 160 pounds. Yes. Uh, I had to use a pipe on the end of my breaker bar. But, hey, this, these trucks are super duty, so you have to have that, those strong bolts and everything. Um, okay. Let's uh, go ahead and now, in this brackets they have on these brake lines is where these lines are supposed to feed through. Um, this is a vacuum hose that's supposed to work for your brakes, your interlock brakes. And there's actually a uh, hose, there's a nipple right here in the back. And every time when I take these things apart, I always blow through and make sure air goes through, and it does. So we're going to slide that back on again. And then you've got your, your new wiring that's going to connect into your, the clips that's already on your brake lines goes there and then we've got another we got to pull that out okay here we go here's a new one we'll push that in there that's it then you put your tires back on um, your lug nut torque on these trucks and they're special Back when all these vehicles were first coming out, they had a problem with lug nuts coming off. They come out with a new lug nut that has this washer on it. These lug nuts are torqued to 155 pounds. I always torque my lug nuts. I don't care which one. I know so many people don't do it. Believe me, I learned. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to get this disconnected. And then that connects. There's a connector right here. It'll wrap up around and connect behind here, that end. It's right back here. So let me get that hooked up there again and get that connected. We're going to get the tire on. And then, guys, I've got to run on over and do the other side. I believe I've got the problem. Um, I, I, what I, I don't know if I said it earlier, but about like a month ago, I jacked this thing up. Trying with these hubs, you can shake the wheel. And, it will, and if it's loose, I mean, it should be no play at all with these uh, with these type bearings. If it's loose, you've got a bearing going bad. Okay. A month ago, I checked them. It, I couldn't determine what it was. The noise is getting worse. So I decided I'm, or it, somewhere we've got a bearing going bad on the front end. And I'm just going to do both. And like I said, if one's going to go bad, the other one's really close to it. So that's why we did both. Well, here you go. Yes, I did take those lug nuts off right there. The other ones are tight, but I wanted to show you something. Watch this wheel. I'm going to shake it. And it's not because the lug nuts are off. I'm looking at the studs and they're not moving. Or the, the thing. That bearing in this wheel is going bad. We got this side done here. I greased the front end up. I checked the front differential oil. It looks good. There's both of the uh, bearing hubs. Um, yep, there they are. Um, this is the one that, no, yeah, this is the one that I took off. Um, I can't feel because the bearings are so stiff, but this does spin a heck of a lot easier than this one does. That one's pretty, that still is pretty easy. And I can actually feel a little bit of a grind to it, so... I think that was my whole problem. This is done. Front hubs, all done. Four by four, analog brakes. And I believe that was my culprit right there. So, next thing you do, take this thing for a road test. Good morning, everybody. How's it going? Okay. The morning, at the last night I put those uh, wheel bearings in, and I never drove it. And I parked it, and this morning I have to run into town and get some errands run real quick. And I don't hear nothing with any of the bearings. It sounds great. Um, I was on a smoother road a minute ago, and that's where I really heard it. And I couldn't hear nothing. It was quieter than a mouse. So, job's fixed. Feels great. Everything's working good. No lights on. And, uh, hey, moving on to the next project. As you all know, there's plenty of them running around, huh? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Y'all take it easy. Have a safe weekend. Bye.